night. 4. I got to the place at 11.50. As soon as I entered, I ran straight to the back of the building. I didn't have the bravery to look at those animatronics in the eyes. It sounded silly, but it was true. When I entered the office, it was very messy. There were some papers on the floor, the fan was flung across the room, and the camera screen had a small crack in it. Strange, I thought, as I pressed the play button of the message machine. Uh, hello. Wow. Day four, good job. The man sounded dull and non-quirky like he always did. I also heard a loud banging sound in the message. I was beginning to get a little creeped out. Hey, um... I may not be around to send you any more messages, it's it's been a bad night here. I was beginning to wonder what exactly was going on and started getting a small sense of anxiety rising in my stomach. Hey, if you get the chance, can you check in one of those suits in the back? I might be... The sound of a familiar tune cut him off. It was the tune that Freddy always used to play as part of his act. Could Freddy be doing something with this man? Oh no, he finished. The message kept going as I heard the sound of the man and some other thing scream, along with a very loud cracking sound. I was terrified, shocked with fear, and could not move. What happened to him? D did he did he just die? That explained the place being a mess, but how did this happen? It sounded like something impossible. No computer programmed creation could act like this, even if it was malfunctioning. Set for an hour, not looking at the cameras or door lights, I was terrified to do everything. What snapped me out of my daze was the sound of heavy footsteps approaching me on the right. I didn't even check the door lights. I didn't even look at the cameras. I ran out of the room to the right to face whatever the thing making the footsteps was. I was confident, angry, and scared at the same time. As soon as I entered the East Hall, those feelings left me except for fear. There, looking straight at me, were a pair of white eyes. I just looked at it until it began moving forward and started laughing. It sounded like Freddy's voice, so there's no doubt what I was facing was Freddy. I ran straight back to the security office. As soon as I entered, I began hearing footsteps coming full speed after me and the other door. I closed the door Freddy was by in time. As soon as I was about to close the other door, I saw the fox. It was running straight for me, mouth open and tears all over it, revealing its innards. I pressed the door button right before it entered, its nose being less than a foot away from me. I sat and let the power drain. By 2 a.m. I was at 72%. By 3 I was at 49. At 4 I was at 28. And it was 5.30. It was at 12. I didn't know if I could survive and I began not to care. I was slipping away. One of my favorite childhood memories has been turned into a nightmare. I woke up to the boss shaking me. He told me it was 7 a.m. and that I needed to go home. But there, there had been an accident. I asked him what it was but he said I shouldn't worry and I should get some rest. He appeared not to care that I was sleeping on the job and just let me go without saying a word on the matter. As I was leaving, I smelled this very foul odor in the main stage area and all the bots appeared to have red marks around their eyes. I thought I was just imagining them because I do experience hallucinations from time to time, but a part of me was telling me that those marks were real. When I stepped outside, there was a lot of police cars out there. I saw some policemen talking to the owner and others writing down information. I also saw that car from a couple of nights ago when I arrived for my shift parked in the parking lot. It had a caution tape around it, which caused me to believe it belonged to my mentor. When I got home, I did all my research on finding some old info on the old security guard. After a good two hours of research, I came across the name Todd Smith. I believe it could possibly be the name of the man I was looking for but I'm not sure. I thought about asking my boss his name tomorrow, but for now I just had to get some sleep. Night 5 I didn't want to go to work at all. I was too terrified, but I had no choice. I needed the money and it better be worth it. I arrived at the place and my boss was waiting outside for me. Hello sir, I greeted. Shut your mouth, he replied. I was surprised. I Excuse me, is there a problem, I asked? Yeah, there is. He began moving towards me. That old security guard? The guy whose job you took? He's dead. He finished. Uh, you're, you're kidding, right? I asked. I knew he was dead. I just didn't want to believe it. 
No, I ain't kidding. The funny thing is, you're the only person that could have been here with him when it happened, he said. What are you saying? I questioned. Oh, quit playing all innocent. You know that you killed him. I have no evidence other than you being with him at this whole time of the incident. I will find more evidence and you will be locked up. He finished. Sir, I... I can tell you that I've never even met this person. I did not commit this crime, I replied. Then who did it? An intruder? There are no signs of forced entry. The animatronics? Impossible. He didn't wait for me to finish. He stormed away to his car and drove away. I entered and sprinted to the security office. I want to just get this night over with and, and the only place I want to see those animatronics is on the cameras, not anywhere else. I entered the office and saw that I had a message. I thought it was from my boss, so I pressed play. I was completely wrong. What I heard was a deep voice saying a bunch of gibberish along with a couple screens. The voice sounded a bit like Freddy's and I'm sure it was. But the way they've been acting, I'm not sure they left this horrid message. I couldn't even figure out what he was saying which, which frightened me further. I immediately picked up the tablet and began checking on the stage in Pirate Cove. Those places are where those creatures originate, so my safest bet was to watch those places carefully. The camera then went dark. I then began to hear pots and pans shuffle around. This made me tense up because I knew one of those things were making those noises. When the cameras came back on, I checked everywhere for the animatronics. Freddy was still on stage, thankfully, but Bonnie and Chica were gone. The curtain in Pirate Cove was halfway open, but that wasn't my main concern right now. I then tried to locate Bonnie and Chica. I found Bonnie at camera 3 and she just... She was just staring at me through the camera, her face up close enough that I could see her endoskeleton eyes. I began to scan around for Chica, but I could not find her. I checked the door lights. Chica was outside with her jaw wide open. I closed the door to avoid her getting in. As soon as I did that, I began hearing Freddy's tune play. I checked the cameras and saw Freddy in the audience area, and I could only see with those white eyes. I checked the door lights and saw Chica was gone, so I opened the door. I checked the cameras again. Bonnie and Chica were now standing on opposite sides of Freddy. I checked Pirate Cove and the curtain was wide open. I closed the door immediately, knowing soon the fox would be here. I then checked the cameras and saw laying next to Bonnie was that fox. His eyes were wide open, but it was limp. The camera then went black and Freddy's tune then got slower and more, well, demonic sounding. Camera came back on, and I saw that now in front of the whole game was a limp Freddy Fazbear suit with eyes poking out of the front of the mask, with streams of blood stained down the sockets. The cameras went dark again, and the tune picked up speed gradually. I began hearing footsteps close and at every angle, and I hit both the doors shut as soon as I could. I then blacked out. I woke up to the banging on the door. I checked the time, 5.55 a.m. I checked the cameras and saw that each animatronic was in their respective spot. I thought my boss showed up early and wanted to come in, so I opened the door. When I did, I saw that the same Freddy Fazbear suit with the eyes poking out of the front. I was sure I also see some teeth, but I didn't look too close. The last thing I noticed was a bib on its chest. It was the same one on Chica's, only there was dry blood all over it. I ran away, I left the building, and I drove as fast as I could. Two days later, I received a letter in the mail with my check from Freddy's and a uh, you're fired note. I, I didn't care. I, I wanted a different job now. I didn't want to spend another day in that fucking place. I contacted the authorities and told them about what I experienced in that place, but they told me that I should get some rest. Yeah, well, fuck yeah. What happened in that place for kids was not right. There was something very wrong. <laughs> I heard the place is scheduled to close down soon, but to have a grand reopening next year. All I know is that whatever went on in there could not be achieved by an AI-controlled suit. I now see what I truly loved as a kid was all a big, nightmarish lie.